At Heap, we understand the importance of quickly and easily virtualizing events so there's no wasted time when running analysis and optimizing flows. Because of this, we have created an event visualizer that can be used for Android applications. In this short video, we will review the types of events that Heap is automatically capturing for Android, how to define events using our event visualizer, and where to see those events in your Heap account. Before heading to our event visualizer, it's important to understand what events Heap is capturing. These will be the foundation for what you can define using our event visualizer tool. In total, we have six different types of events that we're capturing out of the box. Activity transitions, fragment transitions, page transitions, touches, field edits, app installations, and app upgrades. Under the hood, Android developers may implement screens in an Android app in a variety of different ways, which means screen views can be made up of activity transitions, fragment transitions, or both. Over the next few minutes, we'll discuss the best way to identify which of these are implemented for a particular screen view you're defining, but for more details on the difference between these two event types, check out our mobile event and properties lesson. Next up, we have page transitions. This event type is reserved for swipeable content. So think about looking through images on your social media app, images of a product you're looking at while shopping online, or a new user onboarding flow in an app. Touches refer to any clicks that happen throughout your application. And field edits refer to any clicks made in a field box that can be filled in. It's important to keep in mind that Heap will not capture any content added to the text fields for security and confidentiality purposes. And finally, we have application installations and upgrades. These lifecycle events are tracked from Heap's perspective of when a user first visited the app. For us to capture that your app has been installed, the user would need to open it. For application upgrades, since we're capturing your app's version number, Heap captures when a user logs in with a newer version. Although tracked in Heap, you'll likely never see these particular actions populate in the event visualizer. This is because they only fire once per installation or upgrade, which will have happened before you pair with the event visualizer. For a more detailed breakdown of these events, as well as an overview of mobile-specific properties, check out our aptly named Mobile Doc in our Help Center, or our Mobile and Event Properties lesson available in Heap's Resource Center. Once you have a grasp on the Android-specific event types Heap is capturing, you can then easily understand the event visualizer. Open up your app on your phone and then head to your Heap account. In Heap, make sure you're in the correct environment by looking in the top left corner. If you need to change, just click and select. Next, head to the Define tab and select the event visualizer. From here, you will see a prompt on the screen with the pairing gesture, which is up three times, down three times, up three times, down three times on the volume buttons. This is our default pairing gesture, but the gesture can be customized by your admin, so be sure to check with them on how to pair your Android phone to the event visualizer. Once you know how your team can pair with the event visualizer, go ahead and pair your device. After performing the pairing gesture, you'll be able to select your device here. If multiple people on your team are pairing with the event visualizer, you'll see all of the devices listed here, so be sure you select the correct one to pair with. Once selected, a pairing request will be sent to your device. The code you receive should match what you see on the event visualizer page. Once you have confirmed the correct device has been selected, go ahead and select Accept on your phone. Once accepted, you'll be able to interact with the app on your phone normally. As you do so, you'll see those interactions populating in the event visualizer, much like you would in our live view feature for web. In addition to this event stream, you'll see a screenshot of the particular screen you're on in your app, so you have a better visualization into what it is that you're selecting. You'll also notice that you'll be able to see which events have been defined and which have not been defined. Everything you're seeing on the left here is what the app developers have input for the different actions being taken on the app. For screen views, if you're seeing both activities and fragments populate, a good rule of thumb is to use the activity transition instead of the fragment transition. However, if the activity transition name that was assigned by the app developers is not meaningful, we recommend using the fragment transition instead. 
Once you zero in on something that needs to be defined, you can click on the particular event, which will trigger a pop-up module. In this module, you'll see that Heap is surfacing a lot of useful information. You will see the property Heap believes encapsulates the event you selected, the view hierarchy, and all of the event properties that are being captured for the event. At the top of this module, you'll see this section called Select Target, which is the app's view hierarchy and mocks what you see in the web version of the event visualizer. It looks like there are no matching definitions for this event yet, so let's go ahead and define it. From here, you can select the elements that you want from this ancestry list, or you can come down here, turn on the target element is a child of, to get even more granular in your selection. This allows you to broaden your selection or narrow it down, ensuring you define the event exactly the way you desire. If you want to refine your event definition even more, you have the ability to filter by event properties directly from this module. You can do so from the top of the module, or as you scroll through the event properties heaps capturing, you can add a filter directly from this list. Simply click on this plus icon and the filter will be added. Once defined the way that you like, click define. From here, you'll be able to name your event, add it to the appropriate event category, and determine if you want it to be personal or shared. Don't forget to follow your naming convention. Go ahead and select Define Event to save. Once you save this event definition, the event visualizer will update and reflect the newly created definition, and you can proceed with creating your next definition. Let's define the available options in this Sort Order button. Heap allows me to create one definition that includes all of these options, since they're a child of the sort bar. If I choose to create just one definition, I can still break out these options in my analysis by using the target resource ID or target text properties in a group by. This prevents you from needing to create a definition for each of these options here, saving you time as you run your queries. Since I clicked into the highest rated event from the visualizer, you will see here Heap has zeroed in on that specific selection. So to make a more generic event, I'll go up in the hierarchy here, broadening my selection. I'll go ahead, save my definition, name it, and here we will see it updated in the event visualizer as having been defined. To see these events in your Heap account, you'll simply head into the Define tab, click into Events, and from here can click into your desired event. For those companies using Heap on both mobile and web and want to analyze events simultaneously, we recommend creating combo events. Oftentimes, mobile and web apps aim to have some level of feature parity, so an overall user journey can be tracked across platforms. Combo events can be used to model this omni-channel event. For more details, check out our combo events documentation, or for a more detailed approach, check out our lesson on Heap for web and mobile. And finally, be sure to keep your account clean and trustworthy by QAing your newly created event or events. For questions on how to QA, check out our live view and events docs. As always, for any questions, feel free to reach out to us at training at heap.io.